I want to send out a call first to the lost. If you're lost today, I want you to know the greatest decision that you could ever make would be to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Salvation is the greatest gift ever offered to humanity. No matter, no matter what your past is, no matter what your reputation is, Jesus said that he could make you new that you could be born again. 1 Corinthians says, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That means that when you meet Jesus, you're not who you used to be. I tell everybody all the time, if you don't know me now, you can't say you knew me when because who you used to know is dead and gone. He's six foot under. I buried him a long time ago. I am different in every sense of the word. My personality, my outlook, my attitude, my perception, it's all been changed. You know in the Bible days they used to switch their name. Saul went to Paul because he had literally become a different person. Simon went from Simon to Peter because he literally became a different person. You can become different today, but you can't become different by yourself. I hear too many people say, when I get it together, I'll go to church. When I get it together, I'll serve the Lord. You can't get it together by yourself because if you could, you'd have died on that old rugged cross 2,000 years ago. If you were sanctified enough to get it right without any help from Jesus, you'd have been the sacrifice that God slayed on the cross for humanity's sins. But because you can't get it together by yourself, the first thing that you have to do is run to the cross. I like the old hymn that said, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. You come just as you are, with your issues, with your problems, with your baggage, with your reputation, with your past, with your divorces. No matter what you've been through, you can come to the cross just as you are, and Jesus can save your soul. The second call that I want to send out is for those Christians who have not been sowing. You've allowed the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and other things to distract you and to keep you from sowing seed. It is your responsibility to integrate Scripture into your everyday conversation. It's your responsibility to bring it up. The sinner is not going to bring it up. The sinner's not going to ask you about Jesus. You got to tell them about Jesus. We are living in the 11th hour, and we have to begin to move as the Spirit gives utterance, moving outside the church doors, moving outside our designated place of worship, taking what we get here out there so that we can make a, an impact on the world in which we live. The third call that I want to make goes out to those of you who've been sowing, those of you who's discouraged because you've been casting out seed, but you don't see nothing growing in your field. You don't see anything changing. You don't feel like you're making an impact. You feel like all your words and actions are futile. I want to give you a scripture. The Bible says, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Sometimes the enemy will send you a mirage to make you think you're not effective. But if you're sowing the word, the Bible said it would not return void, that it would always make an impact, that it would always produce the return. So if you're declaring his word, you have a harvest that's coming in. Anything you make happen for somebody else happens for you as well. If you help somebody else to prosper, you're going to prosper. There's some of you out there who've been faithful soldiers. You've endured hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage you tonight by telling you that your blessing is coming. Don't faint. Don't give up. I know your blood pressure's dropping. I know a cold sweat broke out. I know your knees are getting weak. But you got to find the motivation to keep going because if you faint not, you're going to have a harvest you're going to have a harvest that is so great you won't be able to contain it. God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour 
pour upon you a blessing that you're not able to contain. You're not just going to be blessed. Your family's going to be blessed. Your grandkids are going to be blessed. Your aunt and uncles are going to be blessed. Anybody you see at Walmart's going to be blessed. God is going to do something magnificent through you because of your consistency, because of your faithfulness.